What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another video. We got a beautiful day out here. It's finally, it's actually a little chilly. I need to get a hoodie on. Banjo's looking swagged out in that hoodie right there. Uh, we are going to the ranch and we are going to be doing some hunting. That is the plan. We've got a 3D archery range set up and ready to go in the backyard. We've got 15, 25, 35, 45, 55 yards. Now, I know you professional hunters out there are like, Flair should be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. But listen, Rick, I started shooting at 15 yards and I started hitting bullseyes. I ain't about to change my ways now, okay? I know where to hit and how to hit it at 15 25 35 45 55 so um we got to get some practice we've got the bow right here with some arrows and we are going to make sure i'm dialed in um the plan is to shoot all five actually we have six arrows so i could probably double up i what i've been hearing from you guys professionals out there that like that 35 range is where that sweet spot you don't want to go too much more above that i'm only shooting at like 50 pounds so i don't want to go too crazy so i might go one two three four five and then throw that second one in that middle that big big chungus buck right there since he's at 35 yards and i think that's that's where I'd feel comfortable. Anything over 35, I'm going to be like, meh. If I had like a 70 pound draw, you know, weight or whatever, then I might think about it. But today's objective is to get dialed in. We're going to head down to the ranch. We're going to set some cameras out. We're going to give you guys some updates on some tree stands, kind of just do some work, but then also sit in a tower tonight and hunt slash scout. We may not shoot something. We may shoot a giant 10 point. No one knows, but we want to sit in a tower that's over one of our food plots that are starting to sprout and coming up so we can see what's out there. If we're getting bucks, dose, I've seen some coyotes out there and we will have the bow with us i don't know it's not like a super serious hunt again it's more just like it's like pre-fishing right you got big big fishing guys out there lucy millie what why are you squeaking so much lucy look lucy made a bet on the on the flower bed over there and my hot tub is over overfilling i guess it's not through the wall i was gonna say will it siphon back in there but i think without it being well it probably won't do that maybe it will i'm not sure um anyways so that is kind of the plan but i do have a huge when i say huge i mean a huge announcement we've been working on it for a long time we are launching guggen uncut and it's an app and it launches on October 25th. So if you guys don't know what we're talking about, because you probably don't, because the first time I've talked about it, but the Googans got together. Obviously you saw everything happen with YouTube and censorship and whatever, which we kind of got it resolved. We got we got it figured out. You know, we're able to still post hunting videos like we are now, but we're still not able to post the, the guts, the gore, the cleaning, the cool stuff, the uncensored stuff. You can't do that still. You can show hunting. You just can't show any of the cool stuff like we could back in the day. So a Googan is launching an app called Googan Uncut where myself, we've got Lunkers and some of the other guys that like to do the hunting videos are going to be posting posting on that app and so it launched on the 25th so get ready it's going to be on the app store and you can download it and it's called Google Uncut and you're going to see not just hunting videos like today for example let's say we go shoot a deer whether it's a doe buck doesn't matter we got to clean that sucker right we'll show you everything it's completely uncensored uncut you guys we'll leave in all the good stuff for you whether it's cleaning the deer cussing the bloopers like I said it'll be the most uncut form of our video possible that's going to go up on this app and then it'll get trimmed back down and get put up on YouTube but we are going to be doing some bonus videos um you like my favorite video banjo you know what my favorite videos are going to pawn shops and buying pews for some reason my favorite thing in the world because one they don't usually work and that's always a fun time to try to figure out how to get them to work but two you always buy some like old ain't i bought the coolest pews i have at pawn shop so like the idea of like me and banjo going to a pawn shop we each get a 500 dollars budget we buy pews we set out some big targets and we have a 1v1 challenge to see who can buy the most accurate pew for 500 bucks or whatever it might be you can't show that on youtube or i mean you can but you're probably not going to be monetized you can't focus on pews pews can be in your video as long as they're associated with hunting or shooting in a controlled environment. But you just can't go show buying pews at a pawn shop and just... And doing all the cool stuff that we want to do. And so you'll see, we'll literally go film entire vlogs like that, that will never get shown up on YouTube ever. And those of you guys that are in the Beefcake Club, that's what this is turning into. So I started the Beefcake Club last, I think, February. Um, and it was great. We did good. You know, we posted some videos, some behind the scenes, some bloopers, um, extra videos and whatever. But we weren't able to really maximize it because even though Beefcake Club is through YouTube, you still can't post the uncut stuff. Um, you're still not able to do that. And so this will give us full freedom. And I know I'm going on rant. And it'll give us freedom to do huge giveaways. That is something I've wanted to do through the Beefcake Club, but YouTube's terms and conditions do not allow you. We are going to be giving away side-by-side -side boats, pews, like say pews. We're going to, we're giving away tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of stuff through the application because we're not able to do it with YouTube. And the people that support us and support the uncut videos and support the bonus vlogs and whatever, um, we want to be able to give back to you guys and do uh, hunt giveaways. Like we're going to be doing giveaways to come hunt the ranch that you guys are going to see us hunt tonight. You can come out and try to hunt. Um, you can go on a, on a fishing trip with Rob and Lunkers TV and whatever. So that's the 
gist of it. We'll give you more details as it gets closer, but I just want to let you know the day that this is happening is October 25th. So just mark your calendars, you know, go follow on Instagram. We'll give you some more details as it happens. Um, but that is the plan. All the bonus stuff, all the uncut stuff, no rules at all. We are in full control. Finally, we are in full control. So that's, that's my spiel. But for now, I got to try to hit these targets. You think I got to go five for five in order to do it? I thought you were going to do a headshot for the last What? Time. It's so, really? Just, just guilty it right through the neck. Right in the coyote. You think, dude, I've been <laughs> honest. I've been pretty accurate on the coyote lately. Really? So I would say, you know, I'm new to, I'm new, I'm new to bow hunting. All right. I, I've been practicing. I've been, I set this thing up a couple weeks ago. I've been shooting a lot. I would probably say, I mean, I have to hit the vitals five for five, yeah. I think. And so, so six for six, actually. I mean, yeah. if I miss a vital, how about this? If I miss a vital, I got to have to like reset and, and do it all again. Yeah. So I got to really take my time, yeah. control my breathing. You know, if I can get five for five on the vitals or six for six, I should say, basically a hundred percent accuracy, then I think I am ready to head out to the ranch, put on a broad head and go sling in some air. Lucy, and sling some arrows at some deer. You guys stay tuned. All right, professional bow hunter flair, ready to go five for five. We've got six arrows, just field tipping it. Let's see if I remember how to do this. It's almost, almost every morning I've been out here doing this. So it should be, I should be accurate, but we just got to make sure. First target, okay, well, there's no vitals in this first target, so I'm just going to aim for, we'll show you guys where I hit him after. I'm going to aim for the, so there's four middle ones. I'm going to aim for the one that's on top, if that makes any sense. I know what I'm aiming for. You guys don't know what I'm aiming for, so here we go. That might have been off. Uh, off to go, it's hard to see it at this angle. That looks like it hit the one on the left. All right, well, the, the big, the actual 3D targets is what really matters. That might have been off. It's hard to tell on that one. It's also a 15 yard shot, so it's just kind of an awkward angle shooting straight down. But now we're going after Wiley Coyote. Ooh, I love the sound of that. You hear that sound? You're like, oh, that was vital. That was, looks to me like a liver shot, pretty close to the heart. So I'll, I'll count it as a kill. And that's a coyote, okay? That was at 25 yards, which deer are usually much larger unless you're shooting the ones Banjo likes. Otherwise, they are about the size of a coyote, which, hey, I'm all for it too. If it's got spots, it drops, buddy. All right, big boy at 35 yards. Oh, shit! gone that was a good one i'm telling you 35 yards is my money spot if we can get a deer to come in at 35 yards today she's gone no questions asked now it gets harder we're going to 45 and it that's like a bambi out there i don't know why the targets are so dang small <sighs> can't mess this up boys right now i think we're three for three oh let's go buddy okay <sighs> this is the 55 yarder this is when things get tough we got to play the wind which way is it blowing? Weast. Here we go. Oh, I might have been a little back. Just like this much. All right, all right. Okay, that was 55 yards. Maybe I shouldn't take 55 yard shots. Just, I mean, just a hair. It'd be a gut shot. It was close. We'll go, well, I guess I'll go show you guys. We're gonna throw this last one at 35 yards. See if we can get six for six on a kill. Yes, sir. Let's go check it out. See, I knew I missed it. Okay, so I was aiming here. That's not good. Lucy, 15, maybe, so I, they can't be 15. Excuse me? All right, so 15 yards, not super accurate. Maybe I, I might need to redo that shot. Let's check out 25. 25, oh, I, well, oh, hang on. There's no, heart. there's actually no, I mean, I was in the, I mean, if it's a coyote, it's dead. But I'm used to aiming behind the shoulder. I guess I wasn't aiming here. I'm still considering that a, a kill. I mean, it still hit the hit the good spot right here. 35 yards, though. That is my bread and butter, folks, because we got one right through the heart right here. See, it says heart and lung. This is my first shot. This was my second shot. All right, so we've got two at 35 that are good. Ooh, the last one might be close to the heart. Let's see. But you can pull it out. Go ahead. Pull it out. So you can see how far back the heart is, though, right? So, like, you can see where the leg is. The heart. I feel like the heart's actually closer over here, but... I'm not a biologist, but if that's where the heart is, that coyote would have been a heart shot. Let's go check out 45. Oh yeah, let's go buddy. So I think they're trying to, really? I think they're trying to say that's maybe the heart, but it's still in the lung right here. So you can see where their shoulder comes up. I mean, the heart might be in here. Either way, vital. So let's just start calling it vital shot. Now, this guy over here, he would be having a bad day. I don't know, I mean, that's, that's a gut shot right there. You can see too far back on the vitals. Would he make it? Maybe. I mean, eventually he would bleed out if you gave him. You know, sometimes when you gut shot him, they arch their back and then they just bed down. You wait, bed down and go back in the morning. 
that's a dead deer. Not saying you want to take that shot or that's the shot you need, but you also got, look how small, like Millie and Lucy are bigger than this deer. And that was 55 yards. So, I mean, if, if I got like big chungus, I mean, I'm talking massive deer at 55, I'd feel a little bit better about it. I mean, this is like shooting a coyote at 55. I mean, kind of tough, but I would say I passed the test. Okay. And again, I'm not amazing. We're going to put a broadhead on it and shoot it at the ranch just to make sure that it doesn't fluctuate um, where things land and where things get penetrated and whatnot, just because I haven't shot one with the broadhead yet. And I think that's probably a smart move. Um, so we're going to go to the ranch, pack up. You're not, no, you're not going to the ranch. Pack up a, a target and get our bow ready. Get some trail cameras ready. Head out to the ranch. Make sure our bows are sighted in. Get some trail cameras set up again. Give you guys some updates on some tree stands and stuff like that. And then we are actually hunting. Tonight will be the first time since we've had the ranch, which we bought it back in March, that we've actually deer hunted on the ranch. And hopefully we get big old Sheila down on the ground. You guys stay tuned. We made it, folks. We are finally at the ranch. <sighs> Love it at the ranch. And it is, look, we got leaves on the ground. You know what that means? Does and bucks are going to be on the ground sooner than later. We are at the cabin and we got to, real, well, we're gonna, we got a couple projects to do where we're going to hang up some cameras. There's another tree stand that's brand new that you guys haven't seen. Um, Actually, I haven't seen yet. Chris, both Chris is out here. They help kind of manage the properties and stuff like that. And they were like, we found this really cool spot. We put out a, a tree stand. Um, Go check it out. Actually, there's two. If you want to see two of them, potentially, because I think this the last yeah. one's going to be close to where we're thinking of hunting. I don't want to bump a bunch of deer but we're gonna go you know check out the new stand it's it's under under where the new lake is gonna be um so eventually we'll have to move it we're gonna go out there and set some cameras up we got some brand new cameras courtesy of Chris um he brought some cameras and uh and so we're gonna try them out for the first time and you know hopefully they work because the cameras I've been using so far have been pretty much cheek so we're gonna put some new ones out there we've got some mock scrapes already built um that you saw Zach and I do and so well, we're just gonna swap the cameras out put some better cameras out there that should actually send us photos and kind of get an eye for what's going on and just then go sit up in a tower we got to make sure we brought the cooler right yeah. perfect hey, we're gonna have some good i got a snack for you when we get in the blind that's what i'm saying that we need to film you eating i'll eat one if you eat one that's what i'm saying okay then fine you, if don't, you... you don't know what it is no i don't i don't know what we're talking about right <laughs> now who gave it to you uh, or did you buy it it's it's bought but well, i would my, hope my girlfriend's mother she gave it to me and it's, it'll be good for camera okay yeah. it'll be good for camera okay yeah. so we got some snacks some drinks oh yeah what do you got there 35 on the dot where he is. Really? Yeah. You guys almost look like you know what you're talking about here. That's what I'm saying. So we're getting de decoys getting set out of there. And don't put the antlers on that oh, sucker because I'm a, I'm a doe killer. Hey, can you put some uh, little dots on you got, there? You got the white spray paint? Yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to, we, we practice with the bows. You guys saw. Banjo's big buck. Oh, look at the, first off, look at that lid. And yeah, look at this, look at oh, this yeah. lid. We got a bunch of new brand spanking new buck stuff. If you guys haven't checked out, it will be linked down below. All the orange stuff to be legal with the pews. We have got camo hoodies finally. We got all sorts of other stuff. Camo hats, orange, all orange, half and half. We got a bunch of stuff. So that'll be linked down below if you guys want to go check it out and get your bucks gear, which I'll be wearing the hoodie tonight probably. Right now it's freaking hot out here, but it will it will be cooler. So we'll wear the camo hoodie and you'll see all that. So now we got to put the broad head on the bow. So go ahead and start getting that ready. And we are going to shoot the deer and make sure it's not way off because if we see a deer today within range it's going down hopefully a buck my goal is my first archery deer to be a buck but well if it's a doe it's if it's brown it's down like i said so we've just been shooting the field point so i'll shoot one with the field point just to make sure it didn't get bumped in the case and we don't blame the broadhead for it so i think these were the ones we were going to use okay. sure I have no clue. I've, I've never shot a broadhead before out of a out of a compound bow. I'm new to bow, so again, some of you guys that don't know, I have not been able to shoot a compound bow ever. I've got like issues with my shoulders, but now we got hooked up with Elite. They had one. This one's called the Encore, and uh, he's like, hey, you know, we'll give you a 50 pound draw weight, and you know, it's easy let off and whatever. And so I use it, and my shoulders feel great. First bow I've ever used where my shoulders don't feel like they're gonna explode. Um, because my doctor was like, don't ever shoot a bow again. Well, look at me now, Mister. We're shooting bows again, and my shoulders feel great. So we are going to, like I said, I'm gonna shoot one once Ooh, the lighting's perfect too i can actually see this sucker we're gonna shoot once make sure it's good with a field tip and then uh, try with a broadhead if the broadhead's on then we're gonna throw some broadheads on and head out so we're gonna do the cameras stand checks and then we're gonna go climb in 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 the tower and sit for a couple hours this evening and just see what we see if like i said we see one great or if we can shoot one great but if we can just see some deer because we where we're going we're in a tower and you can see really really far it's definitely the biggest like plot we have so if we start seeing does or bucks meandering out in the distance while we're on the woods then that means hey maybe we should go throw a ground blind over there tomorrow and shoot them or maybe climb up in the tree stand that's already out there and shoot them. So today's scout slash potentially get something down on the ground. So, well, let's see how I shoot with the broadhead. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, don't it feel good to be out the ranch? It does. The vibe, some reason the vibe's immaculate out here. Yeah, this is great. 35 yards, that's my money spot. That's still like, the deer's right there, I might be shaking. It's still pretty close. But in the tower, like, I mean, did the tower to the food plot we're gonna be in, it's probably like, what do you think, 20 yards, maybe 15 yards? So if they're running the edge, we'll be okay. All right, here we go, boys. <sighs>
hair high. But I'd still say that's probably a dead deer. Pretty close. Let me throw one more. Let me throw one more field tip at this sucker. Just to make sure. That's still a dead deer, but it's close. Oh, that's a hard shot if I've ever seen. Well, it's, it's that's a dead deer. Okay. So this sucker is half fixed, half mechanical. It's got like some rubber band strat on it. Not sure what that strat is, but it looks like if it hit something, it would explode, which is great. That's what I'm here for. Not the arrow, but the deer. So I'm going to rack that guy on. All right. I hope they're 100 grain because that's what the field tips are, right? 100 grain. Right next to the other one. It's a hair high, but it might just be me and aiming. Um, that one hurt my finger, by the way. You can see I've got issues right here. That's it still hurts really bad, I will say. I'm just gonna keep we're here. We're here. Oh, those look fucked. We're here. We're gonna keep her going. Practice makes perfect, ladies and gentlemen. Oh! Oh, that's a good one. Let's go check out the damage. Well, not great. This was my broadhead. Oh, hey, wow, look at this. We've got Swiss cheese on the back end here. So this was my broadhead one. That's a little high. You don't want that. Oh, I guess I should probably just unscrew this, eh? Did that make life easy? How are you supposed to not cut yourself here? We, you seeing what happened already? Let me pull the rest of these out. So we had a high back right, still through the vitals, more of a liver shot. One through the heart, one through the lung, two a little high. So I'm not at 100%. I think I need to start taking my time a little bit. Quit rushing it. Quit acting like I'm freaking Robin Hood. I just like how it's both, right? You always ask mechanical or fixed, and then you got one guy that's like, if you're not shooting mechanical, you're not hunting. Guess what, buddy? I got both now. All right, let's go back. Let's do one more set. Let's get to hunting. Shoo! All right, now becomes the scavenger hunt. This is uh, Operation Look for the dang tree stand. Um, that Chris put up. Oh wait, how in the hell are we supposed to cross this creek? Son? What kind of what kind of long jump skills do you think I got, pal? Get any better somewhere? Do you think they went across the creek? How how'd they get it over there? You got it. You got a spot? Oh, let's see. Well, he'll go first. You got it. Oh yeah, you got it. Oh no, that was water. Oh no. I that was Dad, daddy, I'm scared. No. Why? Where in the hell? Why in the hell? I didn't realize I had to play freaking Ninja Warrior to get my stand here. I guarantee they found a better way than what we're doing right now. I promise you that. Yeah, you got it. Go ahead. Yeah, Banjo got it. Banjo's athletic. He figured it out. I know with the camera. Nah, I got it. I got it. I just gotta get my footing here. Yeah, here we go. Wow, I just about absolutely broke my ankle in half. Wow, that got rolled so they bad. That with a stand? No, I know they found a better way. I just, I'm missing something. They came in from the east, I'm pretty sure. Not this way. Is there another damn creek? I swear to God. Is there a creek? Oh yeah, I just dry. Okay. Marco. Marco. Really? Marco. Marco. Okay, head west. This way. Marco. Oh, I just hit my finger. Oh, I might cry. Oh. Oh. Okay, I cut myself oh. on one of those blades. Really? How bad? Not bad. Not like that? Look, Take a bite. Ooh. Marco. Marco. Where the hell? <laughs> Marco, where'd you guys with the damn blind? All right, let's see. Okay, we're, we're off. We're off. We're off. I see it. I see it. I see it. Daddy, we, Daddy found it. Yeah, that hedge ball fell. I thought you threw it. No, I didn't throw anything. Watch your head. Someone's gonna die. It's like more people die from falling coconuts than sharks. That hedge balls That's are up thing. there. Yeah, you hear about? You ever heard I that? I never heard that. Yeah, I guess falling coconuts a big deal. Oh, cause oh, okay. It's not bad. Again, how they got here? Let me see how they got here. I bet they came this way because they're smarter than we are. I mean, it's still a creek, but oh, okay, yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be it. So they cleared these trees. If they roam anywhere on this river bottom here, I guess. So, so now we got to find. Oh wow, they cut those trees down. See those big, big ass tree up to your straight in front. Oh, yeah. Down, big, big boys. Oh, yeah. All right. So if you were a deer, where would you walk? Is there is there a game trail in front of it, or were they just kind of? I'm guessing they were just. Oh no, he said. What did he say? He said your best shot is turned facing northwest, which is up there. I don't see any game trails. Man. I don't see any trails. Yeah, Climb up there and see what Daddy How thinks. Mm, yeah, right. I'm guessing. I mean, I, yeah, I don't really see it. I mean, yeah, there's a, there's some trails. There's definitely some trails. I'm just trying to figure out where you put the camera. Andrew's got it. Don't die. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he said turn and shoot that way. That is that? Is there some trails from up there you can see? Ish. Not like prominent ones. It could be roaming, like roaming rut. I don't know. I'm not a deer hunter. Like roaming rut. Know. That sounds like something you put on a t-shirt. What's that? I like this. Yeah, that's going to be our question is, you know, do we think the deer are going to run? I mean, here's some, tra here's some, here's some game trails. I mean, for sure. I don't know where you put the camera in. I guess you just want to see them. They need, you need to see them when they're in range of your bow. So it's either this way or that way. But, hmm, interesting. You want duck hunt up there? Yeah. Dude, I, you know what my idea is? Set one on the edge of a field and crow hunt. Uh, sh shoot those suckers at eye level. I think that's a great idea. I don't know about you guys or if it's legal or not, but we'll figure that out later. Always better to ask for forgiveness than permission. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Oh yeah, there's some trails. I mean, enough. 
Yeah, I think this is where he was he was t telling me. So, I mean, you could always set it, you know, just facing me, basically. It, it's just the thing is, if deer are ripping out there, you're not going to see them. You can see a couple trails right here. I know, that's why I'm like, there's so many trails, I'm trying to figure out where to put the camera. Yeah, there's definitely one right there. I'm looking for scrapes. I don't see any. That would be, that would be the easiest way to determine. But he's, I think he picked a good spot because there's a lot of trails now that I'm really, I mean, they're not like highways, but there's a lot of, it's like spider web. Or do you stick it? Stick it here and face it this way. And if a deer comes up over there, you get them. And if the deer comes over there, over there, you get them. Almost face the tree stand rather than facing out. Because if you face out, you have to go in a certain direction. If you face it, you're shooting wide. This part is pretty cool back here. So I think shooting, aim right at the tree stand maybe. I don't know, I'm not a deer expert. Or do you shoot perpendicular to all the trails? So all the trails are running, they all funnel that way, right? Like at some point they come down. So you shoot perpendicular. So if they come from there, 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 you get them. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, I think, I think we we should do it here because it'll all their trails are flowing down the ridge we should shoot perpendicular across it so that way if they're 10 yards or 50 yards i don't know how what the distance is on that sucker but you get it. all right i say set it kind of right up against this tree this area and i'll walk out here and see what the angle of the dangle is looking like so this is kind of a cool spot i like it it's definitely one of those you just sit and just see what you see i think you shoot hell squirrel sitting in that sucker though oh yeah that'd be awesome i want to shoot one with a bow all right well we got it set up good enough for today let's go check the other cameras check the stands get some new cameras put out there and then crawl up in the tower and hopefully we can sling some arrows at something i've also seen coyotes i don't know if i told you that yet in today's video but seen big old coyotes out here so if that sucker comes by i don't care if it's at 100 i'm rainbowing that sucker <laughs> Well, we are at the next spot here, folks. And, uh, ooh, ooh, this was, oh my gosh, this was, how did that just work? I lost it, and it was right here. This was on the ground. This is my old release. I, that was not planned. Swear to God, that was not planned. Wow, that was crazy. That's where I did my archery shots. This, this field, oh, this might be a little bit of clover coming in, maybe. This field looks like the Sahara freaking desert. We've got a tower blind over there. we got a tree stand, double, double ladder, tr one, single ladder, double ladder tree stand, whatever that is. And we made a mock scrape. Does it, now, does it look like the mock scrape's been touched? That looks like a faint foot print right there there's one oval and one oval other than that not a lot tried doing a thing right here where they scrape and i see one light footprint but not 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 much um so we're gonna put another camera on it just because if anything's cruising this edge and then you know consistently we can crawl up there and shoot it with a bow or we can crawl over there and shoot with a rifle so that's kind of the plan here we'll see if one on there is that crow crow feather I'm telling you we're, we're gonna do some crow hunt videos here soon yeah let that one rip again hunting this, i mean like this that looks like clover i don't know what clover i mean i know but i don't know what it looks like when it's little yeah. It's a baby. But we weren't able to get any equipment in here because it's so rocky. Um, we fertilize it, we put some clover. If we can get clover to grow in here, we'll be good. I mean, lots of grass grows, which clover's not that far off from grass, I feel like. We just see this thatch here. You, we got to get like that. The clover would grow really good in that, but not. We got to we gotta we burn, got a lot of these. We got to burn the thatch up. A lot up. of rock. A lot of rocks, we can't get equipment in here, so we're gonna get this camera set up on this scrape just because we have two stands in here. We got ladder and tower. So if the deer aren't liking it, then we probably doubled down on the desert too much. But again, you gotta put cameras out to be able to tell how the deer are using it, what time of day, whatever. So this is like our, again, today's major scout, but also just wanna sit up in the blind for a chance of actually shooting something. I'm telling you, we're gonna shoot crows. Right what if we put them right here in the desert? That's what I'm saying. Dude, seriously though, I'm gonna have to call the game or make sure we can do that because I don't that, know why you couldn't. I don't see why you couldn't. Elevated? Like, think about this. You put the, the crow decoys out here, collar, collar, and you shoot and you sit up in that sand, shoot them eye level. Gang, dude, they ain't wait. gonna be looking at in the tree. You don't have to wait till they get that low. That's no. problems. They always stay at like 80 yards. Dude, I'm us. down. Crow hunting out of a tree, deer blind. Next video, you guys stay tuned. All right, camera number two, complete. Set of the third. We done goofed up, folks. We done goofed up. We just went to the third spot, which is right across from where we're gonna hunt in a couple hours. And how many, was there eight? At least six. Six? Eight. Yeah. Dude, it's loaded with deer. So now, hang on, where's the Bucks camo at, buddy? We gotta, I gotta, I gotta camo up. They're gonna see me in the Navy. We got, oh, fresh Bucks hoodie. Oh, I love that hoodie. Who dis? They're not gonna see, see okay, if I kill a deer, you guys better go buy this hoodie because this is gonna be the best camouflage you ever done, done did wear. We turned the corner and I'm like, yeah, this is the plot that we're gonna hunt tonight. And it was like, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I was like, shh, I just turned around. So we definitely bumped them a little bit. It's freaking three o'clock. Like I didn't expect them suckers to be in here that early. Now we gotta go in their covert op. The problem is the tree stand that's out there is right where the deer are. We're gonna crawl in the tower blind. We gotta, we gotta haul some stuff in. No. We got three chairs, a bowl. Oh, Freaking rip. Yeah. Cannot believe that, bro. <laughs> Our food plot, I would say, worked, buddy. Wow. That is like, we could all limit it out if we if it was pew season. That was crazy. What's going to be crazy is if we get up in there, how, if they'll come back or if they're going to be skittish or not. That's going to be the determining factor. All right, folks. Target acquired. We got that blind over there. We're walking in. 
This is not traditional deer hunting tactics. We didn't, I've been seeing them at 5.30. So yeah, we'll get in a couple hours early. You'll be like, well, I know they invited all their cousins, brothers, and friends to munch. We're gonna swing to the right. See the blind over there? We're gonna swing to the right into the woods and pop straight out and try to line ourselves up with the blind. I don't know if they're still there. I don't see them, but I'm guessing they'll, they'll come back right at dark. It's a really good food source for them, so they're definitely used to hitting it. We just, we scared them. But like I said, I've been seeing coyotes out here, so it's not like we're the first thing to ever bump them. I'm sure they've been bumped before. Man, if it was rifle season, we'd be, we'd be in business here. I don't see any. God, I'm like, I'm not to get in the tree at 10 a.m. in order to outbeat these guys that are getting out here early. They're, this is definitely not their last feed. I'm assuming they'll come back at dark. I think we bumped them. Question is, how many of them will come back? And if there's any bucks in the area, there's no deer left. But you can see our pot. Our grass is coming in. All the rye oats and peas. It's got brassicas. Don't look all that great. There's not many of them left. See, it's starting to come in. So I bet they're nibbling whatever is there is of brassicas that's left. Here's the stand. We got our chairs with us. And so we're going to climb up. Everything that we just bumped is going to be hiding in that tree line. So if something walks this tree line and pops out right here and starts feeding on that corner or if they come from the northeast which is where we just came from we'll get a shot because this thing has bow windows um again this was designed for you know rifle and if we were going to really try to get a bow kill i would go to that tree stand down there but then we'd bump the deer even further so we're going to stick call it good here and hope that by dark maybe one of them meanders close enough and hitting bow range so stay tuned <sighs> freaking hot up here boys i'm covered wherever these suckers are yeah we could live without them for sure well we just got up here Sheila, and there's a tree stand on the other side. If we were in the tree stand, she'd be down right now. I didn't know how early they hit this food plot. I had no idea. So, like, again, that's why we're scouting today. Maybe, you know, come back tomorrow over the next few days. Noted, I need to get in the stand before 3 o'clock. That's a, yeah, that's a given. So, that's why you do these things. That's why you scout. I don't know if I would call this scouting. This is more attempting to hunt and failing, so then redoing it the next day once you know what the heck the deer are doing. Call it what you want. It'll help you improve your hunt. But yeah, I'm... I'm feeling whatever this is. I don't know what that deal is. Dang it on me. I don't know how I would. I'm always attracted to them suckers. Hear my back? How am I supposed to be quiet when a deer comes if I'm covered in it's Velcro? It's, yeah. Imagine wrapping your body in Velcro and then anything you touch connects to that Velcro. That's how I feel right now. So, ban banjos on the west lookout, which are other food plots up around the corner and on the north. I'm on the east lookout, so I'm, you know, this little bend right here, I'm kind of thinking it's going to be good if they come out of this ravine, and then the wind's actually blowing to the west, so, you know, if they come from anywhere down there, we should be okay, but big mama, you just got to get her to come to us. Most of the brassicas, which is probably what she's eating, are on the other end, which is why we put uh, the tree stand over there, but I can't get there when they're already there. So we're going to watch big mama here for a bit. Like I said, there was like eight to ten deer. There could have been bucks in the mix. We just, we quickly saw them and hauled ass around. So we're going to sit up here, watch some deer, kind of get to know the land. We've got two hours just kind of sit here and hang out, which is going to be cool to watch the deer, watch the movement, see what time they get to what area. But I will say, if we were in this blind an hour ago, let's assume they weren't already here we had deer at 30 yards right there when we turned this corner so if they get comfortable and don't smell us and get to this spot we're getting a deer down on the ground tonight so stay tuned all righty folks we've got a total of five deer in visibility range not shooting range if it was a rifle you'd have five um we've got we think three fawns and one mature and then one like kind of mature doe one big big sexy mama the other ones are little so we've got, looks like a mama and her fawn, old mama, and then it looks like the pair of twins, which we've seen those out here before. So that's five. So I think we're still missing at least two to five more. And when we turn the corner, I definitely saw bigger ones than these ones. So either bigger, bigger mamas or bucks. We just didn't catch the antlers. But we got five of them came back in less than 20 minutes. So obviously they like this spot. What I'm really hoping for is one of them starts cruising. I mean, because they're going to have to migrate. I say migrate like they're a duck, but they're going to have to move. They have to move somewhere, right? They either come out and feed and go back, or they eat their way here and then go up to the cornfields. That's what we're here today to find out. Because if they if they don't move north, then the next time we come out here, we need to set up on the south end, right? I mean, like, we could literally shoot every single one of these with a bow at this point. Like, they're right in that range. And then there's a, there's a blind. You can see how blind that's a little ways down there. That's the one that needs to be flipped up. We could also shoot these deer through that blind. We gotta get that one up now, but I didn't want to mess with it today for this reason. So I would like to get a doe or a buck on the ground, then go out there, fix that blind, because that might disturb this a little bit. 
maybe give the food plot a little bit of a break. Is she bed down again? She bed down again. You see her? She bed She's bed she bedded down. Yeah. yeah. I have never seen that before. She's a big nap guy. She just she just wants to big chill. And they're keep I mean they're keeping their distance from us, but I have, I haven't seen one look at us yet, even though I'm talking and moving and my back sounds like it's Velcro. But I'm also just like waiting to look over and see big Sheila, right? Just looking right up at me. I've got the bow ready to go. I've got the release on already. So if they come up, I'll do it. And this is the only bow window. Well, not, eh, probably pretty much the only one. I probably shouldn't shoot it out that window. Anyways, we've got five of them in the field. We gotta get them to come closer to us, hopefully. Stay tuned. They are making their way towards us. What I'm really curious about though is if the bucks, big bodied boys, will make their way out here closer to dark. Right now we're one hour away from sunset. So we're gonna give us some time to see how, dude, this one's coming in hot, she's bro. Coming. She's coming in hot. She might skirt though. Banjo, I was about to eat whatever you want, but they're coming in hot. What do you think? 87? Yeah. Bro, that's big mama, dude. That's the one we want. Oh, God, she's, she's coming in hot, bro. Oh, God, there's no way. Oh, my God, she's, she's coming dead. She's coming right at us, bro. Oh, my God. Dude, no. Bro, she's so close. Oh, my God. This is crazy. Oh, my God, she's right here with us. We got more deer. Bad. They didn't come close. Like if those were bucks, or if there was a buck in there, would not have had a shot. So that's not good. I am actively vlogging while they're in front of me at that at 40 yards, so that probably doesn't help. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut up and see if we can get a deer to come within shooting range. All right, folks. <clears throat> we still have two deer in the field, but they don't seem to care. The other four definitely figured out something was going on. So we're still talking quiet, just because you never know when Big Shield is gonna pop out around this joint, but. Banjo's got a surprise. Something to eat. I'm like, I'm bummed because I'm actually kind of hungry. I got chips for afterwards. Oh, thank God. I mean, it's going to be loud as crap. Oh, I don't chips care. Up. I'm hungry, I dude. Like, chips. I, if this is actually edible, I'll enjoy it because I do have an appetite. But Banjo says he's got a surprise. Right, one question. Do you like bacon and cheese or sour cream and onion better? Those are your two flavor options. Choose wisely. Want bacon and cheese? Yeah. Or sour cream and onion? Yeah. Bacon and cheese? What the f what the They're hell? Crickets. Why you That's sick? You. you sick person. I knew you would like to do this. Why you like to eat anything? I don't like to do that. No. Okay. So you tell me I got to eat crickets. Yeah. What the heck? I said, I'll try a sour cream and onion if you eat a bacon and cheese. I mean, they can't be bad. They got some protein. Yeah, they got protein. Yeah. How is that legal to sell? And eat? There's probably cricket farms out there. All right, I'll give you yours. Well, look at those things. I love like the not actually sealed package that they have. They just folded it over. That's definitely. What what part of this is bacon and cheese? That's that's a dried up cricket. That's all that is. You go first. What the? Why me? All right, you ready, boys? <laughs> the crunch. 
Yeah. <laughs> Was it bacon and cheese? Oh my god, my throat. All oh, the deer's looking at me. I'm sorry. <laughs> it doesn't taste bad, but you have to walk. It's like eating sand. Oh my god. <clears throat> your saliva doesn't... No, your saliva doesn't like moisturize it. It's like literally eating rock. It doesn't taste bad. Like It's it's currently stuck to my throat still. Alright, you go for it. Alrighty, we got this. It didn't taste that bad, but it, it does. There's a little sour cream in onion. Really? I doubt that. It, it had... That's interesting. I, I would not recommend that one. So, so do you have actual food for me, or? Yeah, I got Doritos. I could go for a pizza or something right now. I need to wash this sucker. You think they deliver out here? DoorDash. We need to. We need to start a company that. DoorDash. Door, wow, English just stop. DoorDash is it specializes in, during the hunting season. And it skip gets delivered by mule, and like we just like dress drop oh, a pen. You mean like an actual mule, like the animal? And I was like, that's kind of legit. No, no, like, like, you know, like a rural yeah. hunting DoorDash, where it's okay. like you want pizza, and then, like, we did that. I think I did that one time when I was ice fishing, and I asked the guy to drop it off on the ice, and he wouldn't walk out on the ice for me. Oh, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's a business. Think about I like that. it. Well, I guess we're gonna eat some loud chips. We're taking this pretty serious at this point. I mean, I'm happy. To me, this was a dub. I'm, I'm kind of bummed-ish we didn't have time to set out trail cameras, but we can always set trail cameras out later. It's no big deal. We know where the deer are, the does at least. Now, how early they come. I think we just, yeah, one, we learned how early they're out here. Two, we just need to wait for, wait for the right time of year for the bucks to start having interest in the does, because right now they don't, and they kind of live separate lives. And then all of a sudden, in late October and November, they just... Get all horny and stuff like banjo. So, um, anyways, I guess we'll sit here till dark. Stay tuned. Shoo! Well, folks, it's the next day. We are back at the house as well. We checked the cameras. And let me tell you one thing. There is a reason why we got new cameras. Because not a single one of them got us any photos. But we set out the new cameras, as you guys saw. And we already got photos of those. So that we made a good move. And we made a really good move switching trail camera brands to something that's actually worth something. Pop up some pictures here so you can see. We saw a bunch of different stuff. We saw skunks. We saw raccoons. We saw deer. We saw coyotes. Lots of different ones. The one in the desert plot, we were making fun of the desert plot, but that's where we saw all the coyotes and the skunks and the raccoons. So now I know where I'm trapping. So it's good always, it's always good to have surveillance on your property through trail cameras. Cause now it's like, yeah, you didn't see a deer there necessarily, but now we know where the coyotes are going. And so now for trapping season coming up, we should be good to go. So the next thing we need to do is we need to go set up cameras on the weast plot to see what's over there because we, we hunted over the plot that we did yesterday and lots of does. We didn't see any dang bucks. And I'm not seeing them on cameras either. Well, my cameras aren't working until now. So with the new cameras, and we hope we can go set some more up on the other plot. And as stuff gets kind of cold and the, and the ag starts to get harvested, we should start to see some bucks. So yes, although we did not technically shoot a deer, we learned a lot yesterday. That that was really good. We, we learned one, we've got a great deer population. So shooting a few does for doe management is not going to be a bad idea. And two, we learned the cameras we just started using are actually work. So we should hopefully be able to get something going. So anyways, I apologize. We did not get a deer down on the ground. Lucy, 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 you calm down there, buddy. You don't, don't be rolling in poop now. So I think it's only going to get better. I think this was just an appetizer, a taste, just a little whiff of what we got coming for you guys. But remember, keep in mind, Guggen Uncut is on August 25th. It'll be an app. And once it comes out, you know, follow me on social media. We'll have links and stuff to download it. Extra stuff. We're going to get also, I didn't mention earlier, we're going to have early access. So like the videos that will get made to YouTube, they're all, they're going to be uncut and you'll get them, you know, maybe a week or two before. So you'll kind of get more of like a up to date thing. So you'll get early access, uncut, bonus videos, giveaways, all the stuff that I really, really wanted the Beefcake Club to be. But now we have the freedom. We don't got to listen to nobody no rules no limits no censorship the way it should be america and if you want any of the box gear it'll also be linked down below if you guys want to go check it out hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video we'll catch you next one and peace